All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Patrick Van Eyck. I'm a senior director of business development at Semtech, uh, and I focus on uh, Laura and uh, Laura Wan products. And I'm here today to uh, uh, give you a quick update about our uh, Laura uh, product uh, portfolio. Um, I'm going to first talk a little bit about uh, the actual uh, LoRa chipsets, uh, both for uh, EndNode devices as well as for gateways. Uh, then I'll have a, a quick update about our uh, LoRa uh, stack, which we call uh, the LoRa Basics modem. And finally, I will spend a little bit of time on uh, two new uh, LoRaWAN features. One is called Relay and the other one is a firmware over the air update. So we have um, put our products under three different uh, uh, product categories. Uh, first of all, there's uh, LoRa Connect uh, that represents the transceivers, the actual radios, the, end, the radios that go into the end devices. Uh, next, there is uh, LoRa Core. These are the gateway chipsets that go into LoRaWAN gateways. And then finally, there is LoRa Edge, and these products focus on uh, devices that are used especially in logistics. Um, these products are tied together uh, from a software point of view via our LoRa Basics uh, modem. And then finally, there is also a piece we call the uh, LoRa Cloud, uh, which provides uh, geolocation services, uh, device management, uh, et cetera. So first of all, uh, LoRa Core. So we started out uh, probably seven, eight years ago uh, with our first generation parts. Um, let's see, is there a laser on here? No. Um, uh, these chips uh, make up a, a chipset, so that you see the 1301 together with the 1257. Um, Two 1257s and a 1301 make up a, a gateway chipset. Uh, we've since uh, moved on to the 1302 and the 1250, um, creating uh, some, some very uh, significant power savings. We went from a, about a watt and a half on the 1301 to about 100 milliwatts on the 1302. Um, we have a variety of uh, reference designs. Uh, the most popular is the core cell reference design that is a mini PCIe form factor uh, board level product, uh, which we, we don't sell that as a product, but we provide the reference design. So we provide you the schematics, the layout, we even provide the Gerber files, and then you could build uh, that product as is, and we guarantee that it passes FCC because we, we did all the, the pre-certs uh, for it. LoRa Connect, uh, this contains our transceivers. Uh, first generation, um, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with, uh, as well as the, the second generation. Um, these are, the, the, sorry, the, the second generation, the most popular device there is the 1261, 1262. Um, we, again, created some power savings by moving from the first to the second. Um, we are now currently on our third generation part. Uh, called the LR1121, which was announced uh, recently. Um, the, the biggest improvement there is really uh, on the sensitivity side. We squeezed another 3 dB uh, out of it, uh, or 3 dBm out of its sensitivity, so that improves your link budget with uh, another 3 dB. So what is the LR1121? So this is a stripped down LR1120. And what the, how, how is this part different compared to the 1262? So this chip has a, uh, a, a processor, a, a microcontroller inside that we can access, that the user can't. But by doing that, uh, we're able to, uh, to add some uh, interesting features. Uh, for example, there's a, there's a crypto engine in there uh, which we can use to store and manipulate uh, LoRa uh, keys, the, the root keys. Um, 
this device also supports not only the sub gigahertz band, uh, but it also does uh, 2.4 gig, uh, which makes it, uh, you can do uh, 2.4 gig LoRa, and there's also the ability to uh, use the lower end of the S band, which is useful for uh, satellite applications. So for example, we have a partner called EchoStar, and they've developed uh, a module that allows you to create, for example, a tracker that can either connect to a terrestrial network using LoRaWAN uh, over sub gigahertz, or uh, connect via the uh, lower end of the S-band uh, to their GeoSat um, satellite. Uh, there's one above Europe. They have the service up and running in Europe today. And there's also a satellite above North America, and they're running POCs with, with that today. Next up is the uh, LoRa Edge platform. So here, what we did again, uh, we, we took a LoRa transceiver, uh, we added a, a microcontroller, uh, we added the crypto engine, but we also added uh, a GNSS front end as well as a Wi-Fi front end. Um, the Wi-Fi uh, can only do read, only receive, and the idea behind this was uh, to create a low power um, solution that with which you can create a tracker that lasts many years. So compared to a regular GPS transceiver, um, we use a lot less power, but it, it comes with a small compromise. It's not as accurate as the best GPS transceiver, but it lasts a lot longer. Um, the other compromise is that you need the cloud to uh, calculate a geolocation. So what it does is it, it gets timing information from a bunch of whatever satellites it sees in the sky, but because it doesn't have correl enough correlators on the chip, it needs to take that timing data and send it to our LoRa cloud where we calculate the location. Uh, same with the Wi-Fi. Uh, we're able to capture within a very small amount of time, like less than 100 milliseconds, we capture, you know, say a dozen or, or eight or 10, uh, uh, MAC addresses of nearby public access points. Then we put those addresses in a LoRaWAN payload, a navigation message as we call it, send it to our cloud, and then based on you know, somebody's database with, that contains public uh, Wi-Fi wi access points and locations, we can then triangulate and give you a location back. So that's really the, the key benefits uh, of this chip. So here's the portfolio. We came out about three years ago with the LR1110. Um, we've recently added the LR1120, and the main difference is the difference between the two is the, the fact that one uh, supports only sub gig and the other one does both SATCOM and um, 2.4 gig LoRa. And then the third one is, uh, you know, we just turned uh, the LR1120 just into a transceiver where we we stripped out the the GNSS as well as the Wi-Fi. Okay, a little bit about... Uh, all right, it seems a little... <laughs> okay, uh, LoRa Basics modem. Uh, there have been a lot of different stack variations over the years. Uh, we've decided to create a more comprehensive solution um, that is really portable across the different chip platforms. Um, this new product we call uh, the LoRa Basic Modem. And what's inside? So this is an open source code that you can find on, uh, on GitHub under LoRa-Net. And in this product, we have uh, integrated support uh, for both sub-gig and 2.4 gig LoRa. This product or this, this open source code works with not only our 1262, works with our 1280, works with uh, LR1110, uh, etc. Um, next up is uh, LoRaWAN Relay. 
Uh, this is a pretty uh, exciting solution. So you're always going to have some devices that you can't just can't seem to connect to a gateway. Maybe you have a couple of meters that are just too far away from from uh, a, a cell tower mounted gateway. Uh, maybe you have a, a sensor in a very deep well or down some mine shaft, and and you just can't get a signal. Even you know, despite the fact that Laura does have a typically a great link budget. So we came up with this solution where you have a battery powered device. It's based on a single channel transceiver, so it's not based on a gateway chip. Um, and you, you place this somewhere in between the gateway uh, and the end device, basically a range extender. Um, it can handle about you know, a dozen to 15 devices. Um, and it, it simply extend, extends the range. But th the real benefit is just the fact that you, you don't have to install an expensive gateway if you just have a couple of nodes that you need to get a um, connectivity for. Um, there, is a, there are some links in here uh, on, on more background information. Uh, the plan is that we integrate support for this relay into our um, uh, LoRa basic modem. Of course, you also need to have a, an LNS that supports Relay. So if you have a preferred LNS provider, you need to talk to them and, and they will work with you on, on a seamless integration of, of this solution. Uh, mesh capability? Uh, the relay does not support mesh capability. Um, we, so mesh, you know, the whole idea behind LoRa is that it's a, a, a star uh, network, right? Um, this this relay only does one hop, so there's no hop. The, the, the only mesh capability I have seen is from one of our uh, customers called Dryad. They have a uh, a, um, a fire detection solution where they created a mesh gateway where they have their own proprietary protocol. Uh, they create this wrapper. So they, they wrap their own proprietary mesh protocol around the LoRaWAN frame and they can do multiple hops to finally a border gateway where they strip off the wrapper and then it's LoRaWAN traffic again. But they're only selling that as their own solution today. It's a, it's a private implementation. Uh, but that's the only mesh, you know, th that's the closest thing I've seen so far to, uh, to mesh, you know, with LoRaWAN. It, it's not part of this spec, but they, they came up with a very clever way to implement mesh. So. Uh, finally, FODA, you know, FODA has been one of those things that uh, we've been wanting for a long time. Uh, different LNS providers have implemented uh, different versions. Uh, we're finally converging on uh, what looks to be uh, the FODA standard for uh, LoRaWAN. Uh, this will be part of our uh, LBM uh, modem. Uh, the ID behind uh, FODA here. Uh, you know, typically in, in LoRaWAN, right, end devices, they, uh, they wake up, they send some data, and they go back to sleep. But in order for uh, FODA to happen, you need to send a whole bunch of chunks of a firmware image uh, to these devices. So the way this works is you tell these devices, and of course they need to be somehow synchronized, uh, you tell them in advance, hey, at midnight tomorrow, uh, we're going to send you a bunch of a bunch of chunks of, of, of an image, um, you need to change yourself from a class A to a class C, meaning you now need to just continuously listen, turn your radio on for X amount of mi minutes. And that's how this works. Uh, you know, you, you listen to all the pieces. Uh, this is a really a multicast uh, solution where um, you have one key that, that works for all these uh, devices. But I'm glad we're, we're finally... Uh, integrating this into our solution. So uh, this was my last slide. Um, any questions? No? 
All right. Well, thank you for your time.